Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be the final path guide video for Necropolis. As I said, I do fully intend to kind of like revisit these and update and uh, keep working on this spreadsheet from time to time based on the information that you guys are throwing out in the comment section. I'll probably do another live stream where we can kind of spitball ideas, bounce off each other. And uh, in this video, obviously, we're going to go through part six. That's the final one left. We're going to go over who I used. And uh, that is going to be fairly straightforward. Because uh, it was pretty much Aegon all the way through for me in this path, uh, just like with some other ones. And this is a path where you can build up like a full on Aegon team, fully synergize him up and go kind of nuts at it. In fact, you know, there are kind of like three consensus feasible ways how to get through this one because dealing with reverse controls can be very, very troublesome for a lot of people. And uh, I think for most, you know, you just kind of have to kind of get used to it and push through with Aegon. But you kind of will want either Strife or Kate as other viable options for these fights. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of issues. So for me, as I said again, I just fully synergized Aegon with Odin, with Heimdall, with Proxima, brought in Jugs for the Grandmaster final phase and went to work. So uh, pretty much everything was with Aegon and I'm going to explain these fights and my approach to them because some of them can be a bit different and tricky. Like I know a lot of people are initially confused how to deal with Odin. Using any other champion other than Aegon is actually kind of more straightforward against Odin because only thing you need to do is bait out level 1 when he's on 2 charges, bait out level 2 when he's on 2 charges and eat a heavy attack and he will have 6 buffs. With Aegon obviously you don't want to eat a heavy attack uh, and you even though you take no damage due to the nodes whilst baiting out a heavy attack, you still lose your combo, right? So that's not good for Aegon. With Aegon there is however a, also a very simple way. You just want to get to 300 combo when you start gaining Furies and then whenever you knock down Odin, he's going to gain that Fury buff off you. So you need to have 6 buffs on Odin in order to be doing damage. When you bait out the level 1 when he has 2 charges, he will gain a couple of buffs and then the same with level 2. And then with Aegon, as you keep knocking him down, he's effectively going to copy one of your Fury buffs. That's pretty much ensuring that he has 6 buffs at all times. And then for the most part in the fight, you just want to keep pushing him to the level 2 so he keeps refreshing his own buffs. And uh, that's just about it, how that fight goes. Again, with any other champion except Aegon, uh, it is easier because you can just eat heavy attack. He's going to get his energize. It's going to be easier to pu push him to the level 2s and you'll be fine. And here we go, Claire again. And my approach with Aegon against Claire was also relatively straightforward. I was slow playing it, I was ramping up slower, and I was just doing parry heavy, uh, because that is, you know, the most easy way how to make yourself get used to reverse controls. Baiting out level 1s, being a bit slow to make sure that I don't have to bait out level 1 whilst my controls are still reversed. Then, when I messed up and my Proximus Synergy's uh, combo shield was already used up, I just activated my level 3 and did it get in as many hits as possible. So it was a bit of a tedious process because once Claire, you know, activates her level 2, it gets super annoying. She gains a ton of power back and you kind of basically die there. So yeah, uh, it was parry heavy, play a bit slow, build up the power to level 3. Once you lose your combo shield from Proxima Synergy, drop the level 3, get in as many hits as possible and quit out. That was my strategy there. Shang-Chi, I just brute forced. Now, Shang-Chi is meant to be played in a very peculiar way, where you effectively complete the Chi strikes with your combos for him, which is not a great thing, because he's going to gain cleanse charges, going to go unblockable, going to put slow on you. Uh, the one thing you want to avoid pretty much at all times with vast majority of the champions is, you know, doing the full medium triple light medium combo because that, that's how you get stunned. But the reason is you want to give him the chi charges so when he throws his level ones, then you don't take the burst of damage. Otherwise, your health will go down quite quickly. As 
I was rushing through the path. I just healed up Aegon and did as much damage as I can in as short of a time as I can. This fight was slightly more expensive. That is certainly an approach as well. I'm not saying it's the smartest approach, but it kind of worked. Squirrel Girl, Solus and Turian, and, uh, you know, the rest of the fights, there's nothing too crazy. We have discussed these uh, plenty of times already. Aegon does handle them just fine. In the second bit, going up against Mantis, uh, you can just basically use anybody and everybody there. The entire point is you get the intercepts or when the cycle changes, you hit her block and she takes damage. You can literally use anyone. It doesn't matter. In fact, Aegon's kind of slightly worse for this one because he's going to go unblockable uh, and you're going to be able to do the damage less slightly. But this is a perfect fight to use your team revives on. Um, fam, just Aegon, I just rushed through it. Wasn't much to it. And same with Kitty Pride. I will make a video specifically for Aegon showcasing a few strategies that may involve some of these fights as well because there is kind of like a stupid way how to brute force fights with Aegon which basically involves just you know spamming your light hits because you're unstoppable lingers after you just finish your combo and then in that time opponent will frequently hit into you trigger the six furies trigger the mega damage and you're just gonna keep on being super aggressive only thing you need to watch out is for special attacks obviously and level twos and bait them out but you know, that's kind of part of the course. But yeah, you can just brute force these in a stupidly good way with Aegon. And obviously Sandman, quite frustrating fight, but still wasn't that bad. Spider-Man Supreme, again, a great place where to kind of use team revives or use Aegon to hit his block only and exclusively. Here's the note. A lot of people think that Aegon is unblockable at the very beginning of the fight once fully ramped. That is not true. Aegon is unblockable at 1000 combo but you carry on 999, which means that as long as you do not hit Spider-Man Supreme ever directly and only exclusively hit his block, you will be triggering uh, buffs, you will not be going unblockable, and you will be able to do damage to him in a very, very solid fashion. Then we have obviously Null and Shocker, which were also just the egg on fight. As I mentioned in my Path 5 video, Strife is one of the more solid options here as well for quite a few of the fights so we have strife uh for path five and six that can work as a center of your team from what i have heard from the people and other viable option to bring in here for many of the fights would be kate bishop as she often is and as she's also kind of widely regarded as one of the mvps here so uh, obviously against uh Odin, there are kind of like more viable champions that people have tested out. Uh, we did not get too many great options for Claire and Chang Chi. People were suggesting uh, Hulk plus Overseer. Some people had used it against still the Strife and Kate. Uh, we have discussed the Silver Centurion, where you definitely want some sort of power control. You want your Doom, Hulkbuster, your Guillotine 2099 or something, because this fight can be quite rough. Uh, when he's not losing power using his special attacks it's yeah it's not great uh there was a good shout out with captain america infinity uh war synergy where you the power drain tech champions after they use special attack that could potentially be a solid idea as well bringing in like captain america infinity war plus one of the tech champions for his synergies uh, that he could work decently well with spider-man and sans but again nothing too crazy we discussed these three fights and then we have the null and shocker so that is, you know, more or less where we're at. Uh, since people have been asking, I will be making a video where I kind of uh, show the Aegon mastery setup. I'm going to explain kind of like how I started my ramp, where I put my masteries afterwards, then when I, what I took off when I swapped in like a Shuri or a different champion, because I was swapping masteries throughout my Abyss run to make it easier for me. And... Uh, Additionally, like, you know, a few bits and tricks and uh, things to point out with a gun and some individual fights, I suppose. If, you're at, if you are interested in that video, well, then definitely hit that uh, like button, hit that sub button so you don't miss it. Hit that notification bell. And uh, yeah, that will be pretty much it for now. If there are more Necropolis videos that you would want to see from me, then please do let me know what they are and what would you want exactly me to make. And uh, yep. I will be pretty much done with this for now. Well, uh, again, hope this is helpful for you guys. All the, well, the link to the spreadsheet is in the video description and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye-bye.
did with hello there guys and welcome back to the channel so we have all the information about